Welcome to the city of Royal Oak. We're very grateful for each of you for being here today. A special thanks to Senator Chang and her colleagues for their efforts for tackling a problem that's plagued Michiganders for years. As mayor of Royal Oak, I'm really thrilled to learn more about the details of Senate Bill 549 here today. Um, it's noted that hard times and struggling to make ends meet is not unique to any particular zip code. The latest data from the U.S. Census Bureau shows about 4,000 people right here in my hometown, the city of Royal Oak, could potentially benefit from water affordability legislation. Both large and small communities throughout the state of Michigan and throughout Oakland County, Macomb County, and Wayne County are getting behind these measures because we recognize water is life. I love to see win-wins in any legislation. And one of the things that stuck out to me uh, in, this, in this proposal is that the prospect of low-income uh, households having the ability to fix water leak issues um, and reduce water wastage while at the same time fixing a problem in their homes is a win-win for everybody in our water system. This legislation aligns with who we are as Royal Oak and with the core values of who we are as a community. We're eager to hear more about this legislation today and grateful that everyone is here to learn as well. And it's my pleasure uh, to introduce Mayor Mike Duggan from the great city of Detroit. Mayor Duggan. Well, thank you, Mayor. Nice to be uh, in Oakland County. Uh, in 1981, Congress implemented the LIHE program, the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. And it keeps Americans from having their gas and lights turned off during wintertime. It provides subsidy to lowest income residents, provides energy efficiency uh, improvements to their homes to reduce the, their bills. For 40 years, Republicans and Democrats have supported the funding of this program every single year because they recognize it's in everybody's interest to have a funding source where everybody can keep their utilities on. But for historic reasons, water has never been a part of that federal funding. And it's left us in Michigan with a difficult situation. But because all funding is local in Michigan within each city or township, Here's what happens. If you don't make an effort to collect delinquent water bills, lots of people don't pay the bills. And in Detroit, historically, we had years where our water rates rose 14, 18% a year, which was unaffordable. What most cities in this state do is put the unpaid water bills in the tax rolls, which means after three years, your house can be foreclosed for non-payment of a water bill. Uh, and in Detroit, you'd have people who would have, they'd say, well, that's three years from now when I'm foreclosed. Well, three years later, the bill had piled up to $2,500, and we had people losing their homes for unpaid water bills. So in 2014, I stopped the process of putting the unpaid water bills on the tax rolls. Or your third choice is you can shut the water off when they first start to fall behind and try to create as many assistance programs as you can so that people of low income don't get their water shut off. And we've done that over the years with the RAP programs. Here's what every mayor and city council member knows. Is under the existing system today, no matter which of those choices you take, you are going to get criticized. If your rates go up because you don't collect the rates, people are going to say, oh my God, low-income people can't afford these big rate increases. If you put it on the tax rolls, people are going to say, how terrible, you're going to take somebody's house away because they didn't pay their water bill. And if you do water shutoffs in the short run, you're going to get attacked for shutting off water. And the reason we have these choices is because there is no equivalent of assistance program for water as there is for heat and utilities. And we have been promised by the federal government year after year, don't worry, we know water is essential, there'll be a water assistance program coming. It's not coming. And this is why I am so impressed that Senator Stephanie Chang and her coalition of 60 members, including Sylvia Ordonez and the whole team, stepped in and said, okay, if Washington's not going to act, 
We're going to act. Now, in the city of Detroit, Gary Brown structured a great program now, what we call the $18 lifeline rate. If you're below poverty, you pay $18 a month. And if you're not, you pay your regular water bill, and everybody pays their share. That is working out pretty well, but the funding is short term. The problem is what happens when that funding runs out. And what this legislation says is, let's do this fairly. How about if everybody pays a little bit? $2 a month per meter goes into a fund, and we have a system in the state where people of low income pay a lower amount that they can afford. People who can't afford to pay, uh, pay that. It has bipartisan support on the heating uh, and gas side nationally, and I am really pleased to see the coalition here of folks from Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, Washtenaw counties, all pulling together to say it's the right thing for the state of Michigan. So, Senator, thank you for what you've done. And with that, I get a chance to introduce my partner, the Deputy County Executive of Wayne County, Asad Turfey. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Duggan. Uh, thank you, Senator Stephanie Chang. This is definitely uh, definitely a step in the right direction and continuing in the right direction. They always say leaders go first, and this program here is definitely put together by leaders, and you see all the regional support behind me. I, I say leaders go first because this is the first program of its kind that's going to be a program, affordable water program, for the entire state of Michigan. It's going to be cutting edge. It's the first of its kind nationally, correct, uh, Senator? First, first of its kind nationally. And water affordability is essentially a human right. And creating programs to continue that, that idea, that thought process, is going to benefit many people and, and many people in need. And essentially, is this program supported strongly by County Executive Warren Evans. You see the strong support uh, behind me, and we're continuing to get more support as we continue to move forward. But thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you to everyone that came out today to support. Uh, Wayne County is definitely behind it and looking forward. And with that, I'll introduce uh, our neighbors in uh, Oakland County. We're here in his county, Dave Coulter. Yeah, thank you. Thank County you. Executive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I was standing there, I thought about an old phrase that we used to say when we were kids. I'm getting older, so I don't know if the younger folks remember this, but we used to say, water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Does anybody remember that phrase? I think it referenced being in the ocean where there was salt water and you were surrounded by water, but you couldn't drink it. But it reminds me that the same thing is potentially true today. We may be surrounded by water, but if you can't afford it or you don't have the infrastructure that's adequate to deliver it, then you don't have water to drink. And as my friend from Wayne County said, clean water, clean affordable water is a basic right that we do, that all of our residents deserve to have. And I, I am thrilled that we're doing this here in Oakland County because sometimes these programs may be perceived as simply a means to help low income residents and certainly there, that, there's an important component to that. But even here in, in a county like Oakland County, uh, almost a third of our residents have trouble meeting their basic household needs on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, and that if that can happen in Oakland County, it can happen across the state, and it is happening across the state. And so uh, I echo the, the comments that this isn't just a Southeast Michigan issue. This isn't an Oakland Macomb Wayne issue. This can benefit any community across the state. And the reason is because not only does it create um, an innovative and unique affordability component, but it does something also really important, and that is it, in, it invests in our water infrastructure, which is so critical. Um, and now, I, 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 I want to mention, because I get this question a lot, um, we're, we're um, supported primarily by GLIWA, the Great Lakes Water Authority, although some, uh, um, some parts of the county are not. But primarily, we're supported through GLIWA. And there is a water assistance program uh, in GLIWA called RAP, and it's a really good program. But I just want to clarify that that's a two-year capped program uh, based on your income. But if you're on a fixed income or you're, or you're living at a certain level, 
know, those things don't change in two years, especially our seniors who are on fixed income. They're not going to suddenly get a raise in two years. And then they're kicked off the program and there is no water affordability for them. So this program is ongoing. It's sustainable. Um, it's affordable. I believe that the average Oakland County uh, rate payer would be open to paying two bucks a month to make sure that our water infrastructure and our vulnerable residents have the support they need. So uh, I am thrilled to join the coalition of folks that have, have come together uh, to support. Uh, we talk a lot about water. We, t we talk about how much we love our, our Great Lakes State and our water winter wonderland. But I am proud that through Stephanie Chang, through your efforts, and I also should, also should recognize Jim Nash, who is our Water Resource Commissioner. He's not here, but I, uh, I thought he was going to be. But he's been a champion on this issue and so many others in Oakland County, and I rely on him very much uh, to help educate me on these issues and help me understand how important they are. But I know as a mayor, this is an important issue, because what Mayor Duggan said is absolutely right. There is no can to kick down the road. You're, you're going to have to pay the piper one way or the other. So let's just get realistic about that. Let's put a small uh, fee on the water bills so that we no longer have to worry about affordability for our residents. So thank you, Stephanie, uh, or Senator, for your, for your leadership on this issue. And now, from the wonderful city of Warren, Michigan, Councilwoman Melody McGee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, oftentimes, as a local uh, government official, we get to hear directly from our residents um, in the city of Warren. And we recently had a meeting, and they also spoke on water affordability. So I wanted to let you know that water affordability programs are needed in the city of Warren. I'm speaking on, the ha on behalf of myself as a city council. We have another city council here by the name of Henry Noonan, along with our Macomb Commissioner, Michelle Nard. The critical importance of water cannot be overstated. Water sustains life. For communities, access to clean water is essential for protecting public health and sustaining local economies. For individuals' households, it is necessary for drinking, cooking, bathing, sanitation, keeping our hands and homes clean to prevent diseases. Yet in the United States, many people struggle to afford the vital necessity of water and affordability of water. So it's important for not only our seniors, but also for our, those who are working, sustain their income, are having a hard time with paying water bills. So we ask for your support in supporting the bill 549 in legislation. And we thank you, Stephanie, our Senator, for bringing this about. I am now going to introduce you to our mayor for the city of Ann Arbor, Mr. Christopher Taylor. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to be here today to add Ann Arbor's voice to supporting this crucial legislation. In Ann Arbor, we are incredibly supportive to make the cost of living. We work hard to make it more affordable, whether it's through housing, whether it's through finding ways to support affordable and sustainable electricity, or through the precious resource water. You know, I talk to a lot of community groups, a lot of neighborhood groups, a lot of schools, and whenever I talk with students, young people, trying to tell them what it is that their cities do for them, um, I lead with water, because it is crucial and foundational to absolutely everything we do. But for too many people throughout Michigan, throughout Ann Arbor, shutoffs are an imminent reason reality, and no matter how hard they work or how hard they try to keep up with their bills, and in 2024, that is just unacceptable. And so I'm incredibly proud to support this important legislation and to lend Ann Arbor's voice to those families and ratepayers who deserve access to safe drinking water even if they can't afford it. It's a matter of dignity, it's a matter of care for our fellow Michiganders, and it's a matter of making sure that we are supporting water customers who need it most. I would like to, you know, I'm a homer. Uh, I'm from Ann Arbor, and so for, uh, as an initial matter, I'd like to thank and recognize Senator Jeff Irwin, who's a sponsor of this important bill package. His advocacy for this work in Ann Arbor and elsewhere has been incredibly important, but fundamentally, there's a woman who's getting it done, Senator Chang, and I'm incredibly grateful for her, for her work here in this regard, leading this crucial and vital effort. So without further ado, do, Senator Chang. 
Well, thank you so much, Mayor Taylor, and thank you to Mayor Fournier, Mayor Duggan, Deputy Executive Turfey, Executive Coulter, uh, and Council President Vice Council Vice President McGee for your remarks. The statewide water affordability legislation is not only the moral thing to do for Michiganders who are struggling to make ends meet, it is also the smart thing to do for the financial stability of our water systems, and it's the right thing to do to protect our public health. I also want to thank the county and local officials that are here in support, as well as those who wanted to be here uh, but were unavailable. Wayne County Commission Chair Bell, Wayne County Commissioner Kinlock, Oakland County Commissioner uh, and Chair Woodward, who is here, Macomb County Commissioner Nard, Harper Woods Mayor Kindle, Northville Mayor Turnbull, Pontiac Mayor Grimal, West Bloomfield Supervisor Kaplan, West Warren Council Member Noonan, Canton Township Supervisor Graham Hudak, Westland Mayor Coleman, Northville Township Supervisor Abbo, Macomb County Commissioner Zong, and Washtenaw County Commission Chair Hodge, as well as Commissioner Robbie. I'm really proud of the work that we have done over many, many months on this legislation to ensure water affordability for all Michiganders. And I'm also grateful to Representative McFall and Scott for being here today to lend their support. We are seeing more and more elected leaders, faith leaders, environmental leaders, community members across our region come together to show their support for water affordability. When we present the facts about how vast the need is in every single corner of this state, whether your community is rural, suburban, or, ur or urban, people understand how important this issue is. And when we present the facts about how the legislation will lower water bills for hundreds of of thousands of Michiganders and actually help municipalities and residents through gap payments, paying down arrearages, and through plumbing repairs, people support this effort. According to an October 2023 poll by MRG commissioned by the Nature Conservancy, 67% of Michiganders support the affordability program. 60% support the funding proposal compared to only 31% opposed, and 89% support the shutoff protections bill. Thank you also to Wayne County Commission for voting overwhelmingly in support of Commissioner Kinlock's resolution last week to support water affordability. And this week we are very excited to see the Oakland County Commission as well as the Washtenaw County Commission poised to vote on similar supportive resolutions. Southeast Michigan's elected leaders are standing with the, Mich the majority of Michiganders who support our water affordability legislation. And we are going to work as hard as we can to get it done. Thank you. All right, thank you, Senator Chang. Thank you, everyone, for coming to the great city of Royal Oak here to talk about this important issue. Um, just as a reminder, we're not gonna do a formal Q&A, but we'll be around to answer questions as needed. And uh, I think that's a wrap. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.